I've done a few of these before, but welcome to my 2024 edition of the question and answer video. Starting off, as always, with the pouring of the beer. And the answer to the first question that you're probably asking is, this is Great Scott Cream Ale from Black Wheat Brewing in Brandon, Manitoba. They describe it as having a crisp malt flavor, slightly hop finish, with a hint of biscuity and nutty flavors. It's a lot lighter. I wouldn't have described that as malty. Anyway, there's the first answer to the unasked question. So I asked for you guys to send in some uh, some questions, and I posted that in a few places. And I got a couple. Um, if I run out of questions before I run out of uh, feeling like answering them, I will dive into some uh, questions that were asked in comments of old videos. But the first one... What are your interests outside of electronics? Well, one thing that I've been doing quite a bit of lately is 3D printing. Some interesting and useful things like this screw measurer or this uh, lead bending former, or actually this uh, block to hold my bits, this pointer that you've seen a hundred times. Um, I'm sure you've seen the growing uh, accumulation of calibration cats back there. Um, for people who don't do 3D printing, this model basically has some uh, calibrated measurements on it and you print it to uh, to test the printer to see if it can do 45 degree overhangs um, overhangs like that small details in faces um, see what the top layer looks like and just to do the measure the measurements uh, to see if it's calibrated that's something that everybody does. Another calibration print that a lot of people do is the good old Benchy boat. This one failed for some reason, but there's a few of those around here. Uh, what else have I been printing around here? Several cable holders that are hanging up in various places around the uh, shop. I printed this holder for my calipers so that I don't lose them and they don't get uh, buried under crap in the piles around here. These pegboard tape holders. This universal wrench that uh, that Hand Tool Rescue did CAD of and uh, made and published, it's based on an ancient patent, and he built one out of steel and used it. So I decided to 3D print my very own, just in case I need a wrench that uh, that fits something that I don't have a wrench for. And sometimes you just need to print a pun. Oh, and of course there's this too. This works surprisingly well, actually, and I was just using that to test whether I could manually do multicolor prints, and clearly I can. As for other hobbies, I do still have the model railroad, though I haven't touched it in quite a while. Um, I'll probably get back to it when I retire from my uh, from my nine to five job, but in the meantime, it is still here and it is still in the background. I do think about it. I just, again, it's, it's a much more time consuming uh, hobby and I don't know how much I want to want to share of that. I know this channel started off with me doing model railroad stuff, but I found that it is just a lot more time consuming than I can realistically do for a lot of YouTube stuff. YouTube just takes a lot of time and building models properly also takes quite a bit of time. So I decided to just stick to the one that I can actually do on a fairly regular basis that may change in the future we shall see something that i haven't mentioned previously is i used to really be into dungeons and dragons and i spent a fair bit of time uh, painting and uh, building miniatures as well but i haven't done that in a long time this guy is probably 30 years old but i'm pretty pleased with uh, with how some of them came out this is the only one i got on display right now though and beyond that, I do a bit of geocaching uh, when I have time. And I've got a couple of guitars that are covered in dust that I probably should spend some time with at some time in the future. But as you'll probably hear again and again throughout this, time is something that, uh, that I don't have a lot of these days. Between work and overtime at work and doing this YouTube thing, um, there's not a lot of time left for hobbies. Oh, and family, of course. Can't forget about family, too. How's the overhead cable camera going? We haven't had any updates for a while. No, no, you haven't. It's still there. All the, uh, all the stuff is installed. The hardware is, is all working as you may have seen in the last video from that series. But as I explained at the time, 
software is my limiting factor and I tried to get my kid interested in doing the software for it, but uh, that didn't happen uh, for reasons. Um, and yeah, it's, it needs software. I've always said that I suck at software. I've taken a few stabs at it and I can't get anything to work reliably enough. So here it sits until either I get a lot better at programming or I can convince somebody else to do it for almost no money. No, I'm not looking for volunteers. Please don't fill my comments with volunteering stuff. Although if you want to make your own video on it, go for it. Sometimes you make things because it's fun or interesting, but what projects over the years have you made your life easier or more rewarding? And maybe they're still in use. Well, other than the shop infrastructure kind of things, which tend to get used fairly frequently, the the two that are still in use you know, outside this workshop room uh, were also in videos years ago. One of them is really early on. It's some Christmas lighting decorative panels that I hang up in the windows every year. And of course, there's the Christmas lighting that I put up on the tree outside. You saw that video a couple of months ago. And the other one that actually gets the most daily use is some under cabinet lighting that I, uh, that I did, again, really early in the channel's history. Other than that, there's, let's see now, I, I 3D printed a few things, a bunch of things. Actually, yeah, 3D printing is a lot of the things that get used on a daily basis around here. Just little shelf brackets and things, bits and pieces, little stuff like that. Ah, I remember one more. This little light here, it is just a basic light from the dollar store. Runs on double A's or triple A's, but I replaced its power with a rechargeable cell that I harvested out of a discarded vape that somebody threw out and put a little charging board in it. Really simple project, but it sits up here magneted to the ducting, allowing us to uh, see what's inside our freezer when we're hunting for food. Are there any good electronics books that you'd recommend? Surprisingly, it's going to be still the classics. The Forrest Mims books that... Uh, were published through Radio Shack decades and decades ago that so many of us learned uh, learned the basics of digital electronics, analog electronics, the 555, all through those books. They're great, and the best part right now is they are all archived on archive.org. I will put a link to them. Paul asks about the weather. Well, right now we're having an unseasonably warm January. Um... If you'd asked two weeks ago, we were having an unseasonably cold January. Well, seasonably cold uh, in the minus 20s or thereabouts during the day. But more importantly, Paul asks, what happened to that laser cutter? That was cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. And I have been playing with it. One thing I have been doing is I've been experimenting with using different resists and, uh, and different uh, things to try and make circuit boards with it. Um... Some of them, the resist wipes off when I try and wipe the soot off. Some of them, I've just been using wrong power settings and whatnot. This one's one of the better ones. Um, it etched out, and I didn't quite get enough etch in to uh, make these traces pop properly. Uh, these ones are not bad. These ones are over etched, and the traces start to disappear. My biggest limitation has been in the CAD and the image processing stuff. You have to do the CAD with the trace widths wide enough, first of all, and, you know, do a circuit that will actually work. Then in, you have to take it into image processing software and change your, uh, your track layout from a PDF or whatever you can get out of your CAD. And then you have to flip the image black for white so that the laser will cut away where you want the uh, etchant to actually etch away which is basically everything that isn't the traces and that is where I've been having the biggest problems it's taking me quite a long time and the other thing that's happened is in the minus you know, 20 to minus 30 that we were getting for a couple of weeks the window that I stick my vent hose out froze closed so I haven't been able to use it for a while um, I plan to get back to it eventually other projects that I used it for before Christmas though I made a bunch of wooden gift tags um, using just this uh, this thin wood, which is which is what a millimeter and a half or two millimeters something. And I made a bunch of gift uh, wooden gift tags. Cut that out. Cut the name out, and then painted everything up and glued the names on. 
and uh, attach that to various gifts and stuff. Only my experimental ones are still here. The rest of them, of course, got given away, except for this one, which was for the for the dog's uh, stocking, and that is packed away somewhere in the Christmas decorations, and I don't know where it is because that wasn't my job to do, so we'll just have to settle for looking at these. But that was a fun little project, actually. But not a project that uh, that fits for an electronics-themed channel, so I decided not to film it. I just went ahead and did it. It was still fun, though. So a while back, somebody asked what screwdriver I use. I assume they mean the, uh, the power screwdriver, because in that video I was using it. This particular one here is a Kaiweetz ES20, and I do like it. Previously, though, I had also been using this WOW stick that I got from Banggood. Um, they're quite similar. The Kaiweetz is a little bit longer, almost the same thickness. Um, they've both got a light on the front of them. They both do the job very well. Uh, the Kaiweetz is a little bit torquier, though, and it's a couple of years newer, so that's the one I've been using most recently. Back when I was building the uh, smoke enclosure cabinet for the laser cutter, Somebody asked, uh, how is that food rack working as a replacement for a honeycomb mat? And there's what he's talking about. It's literally a food cooling rack that I picked up at uh, Dollarama. This stainless steel sheet came with the laser cutter, but uh, I just grabbed this rack. Um, and essentially it allows the uh, smoke to dissipate underneath and it allows the uh, some space just behind the piece that you're cutting. And I gotta say, for something that cost me less than five bucks, it really works well. Now it's not so big as to fill the entire bed area of the uh, of the laser, but so far I haven't put anything in there that would need that extra space anyway. So life is good. It works. It's cheap. It does the job. And one late entry that came in while I was editing, I'm just gonna answer one of these three. Well, a couple of them maybe. Uh, a lot of transistors seem pretty similar. 2222, 3904, 8050. How do you determine which one to use for a particular application? Well, the short answer is those ones are very similar and they're pretty much interchangeable. The longer answer is you look at the data sheet, you do a bit of math on your circuit and figure out how much current you're going to need to draw and uh, what the working voltages are and you choose the most appropriate one for the application based on the data sheets of the various components. And the last question, Maple Leafs are Canadians. How dare you, sir? Winnipeg Jets. Well, thanks everybody for the questions. And uh, yeah, if you've got anything else to talk about down in the comments, as always, feel free. Thanks for watching all these years. I think I'm on to year seven of doing this silliness now. More videos to come. Uh, thanks everybody for everything. I'll talk to you later.